What you can temporarily amend it. So if you've got a buddy that you want to uh, let let borrow a, a suppressor for the weekend, you can add them to the trust temporarily. Wow, that's you, there, there's that's a there's a, a lot of right there. There, there, there. There's a lot of, of freedom and options that the trust gives you. Hey everybody, welcome to episode ninety one of For the Love of Guns. My name is Jason, and it is my pleasure to welcome you back to Team Banch as we talk to Matthew Komar from Gun Trust MFA. Now, before we talk about trusts and NFA items and all that nice stuff, it's time to pay the bills. And this episode is brought to you by Falco Holsters. Hey, everybody. I really believe in Falco Holsters. These are handmade, handcrafted holsters built to your specifications, and you're going to get them in about 10 days. That's right, man. You go to their website, fill out the form, in about 10 days, you're going to get a custom holster built to your specifications. I mean, where else can you get that but Falco holsters? They've got a holster for any gun, every budget, without sacrificing quality. That's right. Without sacrificing quality because that is what Falco is all about. Go check out Falco holsters and use the checkout code Banshee to save 10%. Now, this episode is also brought to you by Freedom Crew University. Man, if you've followed me, you know that I've had videos taken down because, well, people don't want me to teach you how to build a gun. They don't like it. Mainly five members of Congress. Well, it's not just me that got targeted. It's basically a bunch of other content creators that got targeted. And we're all together over at Freedom Crew University. Learn from the best builders on the internet. You will learn stippling. We got a stipple guy, man, and he is awesome. You want to learn SIGs and ARs? Well, they're my classes. And you want Glocks or you want AKs? We got classes coming that is just going to blow your mind. Definitely go check out Freedom Crew University and expand your knowledge. Now with the bills paid, let's talk to Matthew. Matthew, tell me about your love of guns. Hi, I am Matthew Komar, and I'm here representing here today representing GunTrustNFA.com. Now, that's kind of an interesting thing of NFA. Uh, you know, I used to be in, in a uh, wow, I can talk today. <laughs> I used to be an FFL, and I know a lot of my buddies were always like, "Man, you gotta you gotta get that that class three license. You gotta get that tax stamp so you can start selling those things." So like, yeah, I get my SMT, and I'm just like. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that, especially with my my FFL being tied to my house. Um, I think I'm I'm fine just with, you know, being my my, uh, you know, my regular, you know, FFL. Um, but let's talk a little bit about NFA items, because, you know, we were talking a little bit offline and we we're kind of joking around, like, what exactly is an NFA item these days? Because we're talking about a government agency just seems to want to change definitions at will like so as of now you know we kind of assume that it's full auto short barreled rifles uh suppressors and is there anything else that i'm i'm missing uh any other weapon any other any weapon, weapon that's right. the weapon is the is the and, and of course you know the english english language any other weapon well in, in this case of any other weapon is has a specific definition. Uh, I'm not going to try and quote it right now. I would I would want to look yeah. at the actual verbiage to speak it. But it, it's not any other weapon because there are weapons that are not any other weapon um, that are not fall under the NFA. It's yeah, it's, I, yeah. It, it's it's that wonderful uh, legalese that the ATF likes to hide behind that really could be construed at, at any time. I mean, it's open to interpretation for a lot of stuff. Yeah, um, it is. You know, a lot of a lot of when I was in FFL, uh, a lot of the times any other weapon was is putting a forward pistol grip onto a um, a pistol. Could you know that's two hundred times vertical, vertical, yeah. vertical, yeah. vertical yeah. foregrip or something. Yeah. And you know, really, it's so poorly written they could, they could just basically say whatever they want. Yeah. Now you know, and then and then eighty nine yeah. degrees is not vertical, right? Right. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, Maybe. is it? And that's and then and then you have the wonderful word intent, right? I mean, the ATF loves to use the word intent. Um, 
you know, that you intended to do this. Well, how do you, were you in my head? Uh, not really. But let's talk a little bit about MFA trusts because, you know, people think about going out and buying, you know, a, a machine gun. Like, you know, in my neighborhood, I know where there's four of them. <laughs> um, and, or a short barreled rifle or whatever, you know, whatever MFA item they have. But people go out and buy these things, you know, and they, they wait out the form and all that stuff, get their gun. Um, and then now they have this guy, either this gun or the suppressor or whatever, but that is tied to an individual. Yep. You know, an NFA trust kind of removes that a little bit, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's not really tied to an individual. Correct. It's tied to to an an, an entity, which uh, in this case is essentially an organization, right? Think of it that way. Um, a, a trust is an organization, uh, and so depending upon the structure of the trust, it, it is going to have some some individuals involved who who are trustees on the trust, uh, beneficiaries of the trust, uh, things of that nature. So, for instance, like if I. Uh, Say I bought a doozy, right? You know, and I I got all that, all, you know, went through all that trouble. If I did that as an NFA, and I'm a trustee, and my wife's a trustee, it doesn't matter who takes that gun out. Either one of us can take that gun out, correct? Correct. You need to uh, when when you when you uh, I want to terminology is important. You said if you buy it as an NFA, you 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 meant if if you acquired it into a trust and you are a trustee on the trust, then yes, that is correct. Um, right. what, what, what you need to do is, uh, as, as I explained to you, you, there needs to be a thread, right? On one end of the thread is the firearm in question. Uh, and for the purpose of the conversation, we're, we're going to use firearm to mean any other weapon, to mean SBR, to mean, you know, full auto, to mean short barrel shotgun, and suppressor. Right? So any of, those, any of those items. Um, so you have that, it has a serial number on it. Right. Cool. The serial number would then connect to a form four. The form four has the stamp shows that you, you know, you, you bought your freedom. Cool. Um, so you, 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 you paid for that. Right. And the serial number ties back to the firearm ties to the form four. the form four then has a name on it. That name would either be your name or the name of the trust, right? The name of the organization. Um, so if it ties to you personally, then you would have your ID, right? So you can connect the firearm by serial to the form four. Form four goes to your name. Your name goes to your ID. Boom, you're good to go. And and you know you you go about your business, right? So this is the event of maybe a traffic stop, and you've got a suppressor or something. You know you, you can connect that thread, and you're good to go. Um, in the event of a trust, then rather than having your name on the form four, the the form four connects to the trust. So then you would have to have that trust paperwork with you. So again, starting at the beginning, you've got serial number on the suppressor that goes to a form four, form four goes to the trust. The trust then lists you as a trustee. So then you have your ID and then boom, you connect all the dots. You've got that thread, it connects. And, and, and you as, as a person are then tied legally to that suppressor through the form four, through the trust, you know, like bones so, connected with your bone, right? Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I was thinking about that. I was thinking actually, I wasn't thinking about that. I was like, uh, shoulders, head, knees, and toes was what it would go through my head. Right? Yeah. It's just different, just different kids song. Uh, I, I, I need to incorporate that into my into my little spiel when I'm talking. Yeah. You, you got the form four, you got the yeah. yes, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Yeah, finally, the toes is you. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's the, and that's a lot of paperwork for, uh, you know, a serialized, serialized piece of equipment, you know, a, a yeah. piece of machinery. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, going through this thing, um, I'm gonna, it, it, let's just say I, I've created my trust, okay. and I've purchased a suppressor. When I go to the FFL, what do I need to bring? to get that into the trust or what should I have supplied before I filled out my forms? Okay. Or before I build it. Got it. Okay. So let's, uh, we'll, we'll set the, uh, we'll set the form one aside for a second. You mentioned building, building will be a form one. So the, All right, form... I, meant, I meant to say buy instead of build, but yeah. Cool. Yeah. So uh, let's say you, you want to acquire a suppressor. 
Um, so you would, you would, uh, uh, a lot of people are just buying them online and having them shipped to a local FFL. But in any case, in any case, whether you show up at your local FFL that has suppressors in stock or whether you, uh, you buy it online, have it shipped to them, whatever, you, you pay for the NFI item first, right? So once that's acquired and you own it, but you cannot possess it at that point. Then at that point, you you initiate either the well, we'll, we'll stick with purchase. Uh, you initiate the form four. When you do the form four, you have to fill out who is acquiring it. And in this case, rather than putting your name, you would put the name of the trust. So the name of the trust is acquiring it. Um, and as a part of that, you you must have a responsible person. Uh, so an actual human, right, uh, which in this case would be you, you have to have a actual human who is the responsible person on the Form 4. So it's being transferred to the trust, but a singular responsible person is going to be going through the background check and, and dealing with all that. Um, and you can have multiple people, multiple trustees on your trust, but a single responsible person for a transaction. Um, what you have to do is supply an amendment to the trust uh, it's called the 41F Amendment. Um, and what that allows you to do is say, for the purpose of this transaction, there is one single singular responsible person. So, so in your example, you mentioned you and your wife. Uh, if you and your wife were both trustees on the trust, then you would go ahead and have yourself be the singular responsible party for the purpose of the transaction. And then that way, only one of you has to submit uh, fingerprints and and you know all the responsible party forms and all that. Because that's where I was I was going with this is it's okay, we have our trust. We're gonna buy this thing. Like if I go out and buy a gun, um, and the ATF traces that back, which we won't even get through tracing, but if they trace it back and it comes back to me, right? Because yeah. I'm the one that filled out the 4473, you know, not machine guns or any of that stuff. Yeah. It comes back to me, but when if they ever have to do a trace back, does it trace back to the trust then, or does it trace back to the responsible person for that transaction? So I guess that's an interesting question. So a lot of people don't don't understand quite how how uh, traces work um, and uh, uh, registration and things. Um, and actually, to me, before we speak on that, um, I need to clarify. I, I'm in Virginia, and and so my my, my knowledge, uh, I, my, I don't have substantial knowledge federally, but then at the state level, things vary. So, so for, for the purpose of this conversation, we're talking Virginia. Um, so, if a trace was to be initiated, let's say you know you're 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 off doing your thing, you you've got your uh, suppressor in the back of your truck, it bounces out, lands on the side of the road, and somebody finds it and decides that's interesting. So uh, what they would need to do is they would actually that they would need to go to the the manufacturer because that's what they have. They right. have a suppressor yep. manufactured by somebody with cereal. They go to them and say, "Hey, where did it go?" Um, then they say, "Okay, cool. We sold it to this uh, this uh, wholesaler." And this wholesaler says, "Well, we transferred it to a distributor. Distributor transferred it to this FFL. Then this FFL is like, oh yeah, it came in here, and I form forwarded it to this trust. And here's the 4473 that I still have on file." And this is the responsible person assigned for it as a part of that. Uh, so, so they have to start at the very beginning, you know, the head. Right. right. But, but ultimately, it still comes down to an individual person then. Yes. Because there yes. is a 4473. It comes down to whoever filled out the 4473 That's is right. the end of it. Because, uh, yeah, it's funny you talk about the, I, I, I forget about it because, uh, you know, you're in Virginia. I'm in Montana. Uh, our laws here are pretty pretty open. Um, basically, the state of Montana just adopts federal law as state law. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes they tweak it. Like for us, for NFA items, it's uh, we're allowed to own a fully automatic weapon as long as we do not have intent to commit a crime. That's basically our law. Okay. Uh, they just they just took they just put intent to commit a crime behind the federal law, and there you go. Um, so yeah, so it, it, it's funny because that's how back when I was in, the, in FFL, that's how I, it was explained to me. We always they always go back to the manufacturer, come track tracing back. I was just yes. wondered about yeah. at the end. It still comes down to an individual person that that is um, that's that 
makes sense with respons- being the responsible person for it. Now, what happens if I already own NFA items and later I go, you know, this might be a good idea to transfer this stuff into a trust. Can you create the trust and then transfer <laughs> them in? Or is it you a really absolutely- good idea to create the trust now? You absolutely can do it anytime in the future. And I refer to that as my $2,600 mistake. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I didn't know about trusts many years ago. And I acquired 13 NFA items in my name. Um, I, this was over 20 years ago that I did this. And I now, I, I was, I was a, a, a childless single dude doing my thing enjoying my life um acquired had them disposable had, income. <laughs> had disposable income um there, there was real estate involved and i decided i was going to get dumb and i acquired 13 uh nfa items in one shot uh, it was wild it was a very good day um it was awesome but i did that fine um in the end uh, now i have essentially adult children uh, who, who are into the hobby as I am, and they would love to be able to take these things out without me. And they can't because I have not yet paid the $2,600 it would take to transfer them into a trust so that they can do that. Yeah. So basically, yeah. So basically you have yeah. to pay the tax stamp to transfer Twice. it to the trust. Yep. Yep. I paid it once to, 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 to get them into my name and to get them into a trust. Um, so I was being a little facetious when I said, yeah, you can do it at any time. It's cool. Um, you just have to go through the whole process and pay the $200 again. Um, okay. I, uh, I actually am familiar with somebody right now who was dealing with, uh, dealing with an FFL in the area and he, uh, he, he kicked off his form four and, it was his first time he wasn't familiar with the process and uh, realized late in the game uh, as he's been waiting for a substantial period of time that uh, while he did get a trust, the form four is not going to the trust. The form four is set up to go to him personally. Um, in the end, after that realization was made, the, uh, the, the FFL that he was working with realized that they made the mistake and so they ate the entire cost of it. Um, so they, 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 they refunded him all of the money that he paid to them for the transfer and the money that he paid to the ATF for the, uh, the $200 tax stamp. So in the end, my advice to him at this point was, you know what, don't cancel it. You're almost at the end of it. When it comes into your name, you haven't paid that tax stamp. So you're not double paying. So then once you have it in your name, then you can do the transfer into the trust and you can hold on to it pending it being transferred to the trust because you know you it, it's, it's in your name currently okay. and then one day it'll be in the trust name which you know is, is still essentially in your name so so it's, it, it'll all be fine and you'll just have to to wait again but during the wait period you can possess it so yeah so because if, yeah, if you're already six months into your waiting period of getting yeah. that item which yeah. could be yep. you know nine to twelve months Correct. You're halfway there. Just, just, just continue on with it, because that's the thing. That's where I was kind of leading with is if I'm going to transfer this into a trust, does it have to go back to an FFL and go through that waiting period, or since I already own it, it's just you you own it and 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 you'll transfer it from you to you essentially. Okay. Um, And so up until it's approved, it's in your possession, and then once it's approved, you transfer it from your possession to your possession, and you go about your business. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, yeah. 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 I wouldn't want to wait that. 100% get a trust. 100% get a trust. Yeah. I've, I've had people like, well, I don't want to put him on it. But one day you might, man. And you could update the trust and add people to it and remove people from it. You can change it over time. That, I'm glad you brought that up because that was actually my next question is okay, let's just say I have a trust. You know, it was uh, me and my wife, right? We're, we're, oh. we, we created the trust, or uh, I created the trust and I wanted to add my wife on. You can amend that trust. Easy day. Um, Easy day. What, you can temporarily amend it. So if you've got a buddy that you want to uh, let let borrow a, a suppressor for the weekend, you can add them to the trust temporarily. 
Wow, that's there, there's that's a there's a, a lot of right there. there, there there's a lot of uh, freedom and options that the trust gives you. Um, you know, when I bought my first things, I uh, I dealt with a dealer, um, and they did bring up the idea of you know, hey, you want you want to do a do a trust when you when when you do this, and I was like, yeah, not really. Like, is there any reason to? And what he told me was that the only benefit that uh, the only benefit uh, to using a trust as opposed to individually is if it was going to a trust, you did not need the blessing of the uh, uh, chief law enforcement officer. And I'm going to say that right. If, if you're an individual, you need that blessing. And if you are doing it into a, a, a trust or an LLC or, or other corporate entity, then you did not need that. Um, and and it, it just so happened that I, I, I happened to know that the uh, chief law enforcement or officer at the area I was in it was very friendly and it was all easy. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to deal with the extra paperwork. I'll just do that. And he was like, yeah, it's cool. There's no, no real reason either way. And I was like, all right, cool. Um, looking back, you know, here we are. Um, so at, at some point I, I'm likely to, to go ahead and transfer those things and, and, and just uh, take the hit. Um, and it is what it is. And then, you know, the kids. Well, can, and the other thing is, the other thing is you don't have to transfer them all at once too. You can pick and choose which ones you can transfer when you can transfer it. Yep. Yep. I could do $200 here and there, you know, just yeah, whatever. And it's not like I have to then, you know, as we discussed earlier, it's not like I need to then turn them into an FFL somewhere. And, uh, yeah. you know, while, while they wait in jail um, for the transfer to be approved, <laughs> um, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of funny. Um, yeah, I, I, now that you brought up the chief law enforcement officer, I was just thinking about uh, it, it. Brought a whole new, a whole new scenario in my head of, you know, just because, you know, federally you're allowed to, state you're allowed to, you could have a law enforcement, a, a chief law enforcement officer that yep. decides he doesn't like this stuff, nope. um, and you're done. I had, I had heard and and. Uh... This data is, this data is like twenty years old, um, so so it may not be a hundred percent accurate. Um, but something that I had been told about the jurisdiction that I lived in is there was two different people that met the criteria of chief law enforcement officer for that that geography. And one of them was known that he would sign off on 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 uh, uh, whatever numbers of, of things that you wanted, except suppressors. Oops. He would not sign off on suppressors. Like for whatever reason, suppressors were not OK with him, so he wouldn't sign off on them. The other person, they would sign off on two things for a person, but only two things. Um, but they had no issue with suppressors. So the 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 community there would then uh, go ahead and, and take all their suppressor requests to the one guy and then everything else to the other guy. Hey, to like, you know, some other man. I said it's and, and all this to buy our rights back. It's wild. It's wild. But here we are. Yeah, it's funny. I didn't even it didn't even hit me that we could have an activist um, chief law enforcement officer that yep. could screw yep. everything up on a purchase. Um, yep. Absolutely. And, and what it says, you know, a, a share, well, depending on where you're at, right? I mean, if you're yeah. in a city, well, even in a city, you're talking about an elected official. Uh, yep. But getting those, getting those guys, you know, once they're in, it's almost impossible to get them out. I mean, seriously. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but that's a, that's. I, yeah, the area I live in is very, very pro 2A. Um, you know, not a hundred percent of the population, but 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 the general area. There's a lot of farmers and and you know, hunters and well, it, and real real pro two A. So most mostly, if you're in a rural area, you're you could pretty much bet on it being a, a gun friendly area, regardless yes. of what state and federal laws are. Right? Uh, Absolutely. You know, here you know here in Montana, it's just I mean, we have gun laws, but they're pretty, they're pretty relaxed. Um, you know, uh, gosh, we don't even need a, a concealed carry permit anymore, but the concealed pe carry permit does un unlock a couple of places that you can yep. carry. Um, you, know, you know, we have 
permitless carry, but you can't carry inside the state building. But because I have a, 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 a concealed carry permit, I could carry right into the governor's office and I'm not breaking a law. Uh, it's, you, get, you get those idiosyncrasies everywhere. It's just, yeah. it's hard to keep up with some of this stuff. Yeah, like uh, I heard, uh, uh, and I don't, I don't travel there, so I'm not too, too familiar, but it's my understanding that in Florida, uh, you can get a concealed carry permit and it's all good, but open carry is, is a, a problem. And so if you're carrying concealed down there, it's all good, but your your shirt comes up and it gets exposed and then you get in trouble. And it's like, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm allowed to do this as long as nobody knows. Like, Yeah. Well, it, it's pretty, uh, cool. I remember, so I used to live in Delaware. Um, and yes, I did try to vote Biden out of Congress every chance I got a chance to. Um, but I remember one time going through Home Depot and somebody was open carrying. And I was just like, well, uh, you know, it, it, you didn't see that every day, right? Yeah. Especially yeah. in Delaware. Yeah. Uh, and it was a pretty gun friendly state back then. Yeah. And uh, I remember looking at that and I remember looking up the law and in Delaware, open carry was perfectly legal. Yeah. However, if somebody didn't like you having that firearm, you could be arrested for disturbing the peace. Disturbing the peace. Yep. Yeah. Virginia is uh, Virginia is largely open carry. Um, there are some uh, some areas that have, have have laws about it. You know, some towns and, and things of that nature. Um, they've got their issues. Um, but but largely it it. And in, in the area that I live in of Virginia, uh, it's it's not uncommon. Um, I would say maybe half the time I go I go out in, in, in public, uh, I, I wind up at some point seeing somebody open carrying, you know, not not a lot of people, but it's it's not uncommon. Um, but then, you know, you get closer to D.C. and uh, things, uh, things get a little different. Yeah, things get a little tighter. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's whatever. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, I, and actually on, on, on that topic, uh, Gun Trust NFA also has a uh, kind of a, a sister property, uh, onlinechp.com, and 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 we do that. We used to do uh, to help people get Virginia permits, um, but then Virginia changed the law and uh, no longer honor online training. Um, what what's wild about that? We we keep talking about this, just the weird inconsistencies. Is they require online or they do not allow online training, but they don't specify at all what kind of training. Uh, is required other than it must be by a certified instructor. So I, I am a certified uh, instructor. So I could meet you at a gas station parking lot and teach you how to make a paper airplane and it would meet the letter of the law. You received instruction. <laughs> you received instruction by a certified firearms instructor. Um, and 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 that's that that qualifies. But online is not okay. Uh, so we switched over to helping people uh, get uh, permits issued by Maine that is essentially honored by the same footprint as uh by the same footprint as, as virginia so it, it, it gets the job done so we're, we're you know we're, we're helping people get uh get concealed carry permits through online chp.com and gun trust nfa.com for your, your gun trust needs so we can uh you know help people uh buy the rights back one uh one click at a time right yeah well it's so it's so funny um you know out here it's the utah permit in the west it's the utah permit yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But of course, they, Utah tightened up their their regulations that to get a non-resident Utah permit, I think you have to have a concealed carry permit inside your home state. Now, I think they they I think they got sick of the flood of people coming in. I don't know why because it was generating a crap load of revenue for them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it because uh, I remember you know living on the East Coast. Uh, I, I lived in uh, you know I, I grew up outside of Philly. Uh, lived in Maryland and Delaware, and I remember just thinking about getting that uh, Florida permit um, yeah. because back, you know, this is back in the '90s. It was like, man, if I get the Florida permit, I could carry, you know. Um, but living in Maryland, there's you're just not going to get one. It's you know, the, well, until until recently, yeah, so you're not, you just weren't going to get one. Um, and it's funny how stuff like that comes about, where you're just like. But if I just cross, you know, if I just cross this state line here and get a piece of paper from that, yeah. I'm yeah, all right. over here. Oh, I, so let, let me let me tell you about that right quick. So one, uh, I qualify for the DC uh, 
to get a DC carry permit um, based on my uh, instructor credentials. However, the only time I go into DC at all is when when people are visiting from out of town and they want to see the monuments. The monuments yeah. are all federal property. So the DC permit isn't valid on federal property. So having a DC permit wouldn't do anything for me anyway. So I, I haven't done it. But when you talk about crossing these boundaries and these visible things, um, I once worked in a building that was very close to DC, but it was in Virginia. And the parking lot had two ways to pull out of it. And if you went out one way, then you went to the highway that was headed back you know, deeper into Virginia, back home, whatever. The other exit from the parking lot put you on a one-way street that led to a bridge that took you into D.C. Uh -huh. so if, if I had a firearm in the vehicle and I pulled out of the parking lot the wrong way, I'm in D.C., brother. And, and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's it's felony city, man. I like guess that's, that's unfortunate. Well, it, it's funny because I think uh, about five years ago, um, I was uh, I was in training in Al in Alexandria there. Okay. Um, okay. So um, Virginia recognizes Montana's permit. Awesome. Pack up my sig and let's go. Right. Um, and you're very careful of where you're at because uh, in my hotel room I could see the Pentagon. Right. So it's like I I know I can go up to a certain point, and I can't cross. Uh, you know, I can't go visit the 9-11 Memorial right there because it's right on Pentagon property. Um, but I can go just, you know, just uh, you're just very understanding of where the federal properties are. Uh, right. And then uh, that just happened to have been the time that I, I was down there. That's when the, the senators were having the uh, softball game where the guy, you know, the guy was went out in the field and started shooting the senators. and. Um, I'm like, oh, you know, not that I'm anywhere near that, but I'm sitting there going, thank God I have my gun with me because, well, <laughs> crime, you know, it can happen anywhere, right? Crime happens, man. Right? Crime happens. You can't, you can't stop it. Um, well, anyways, going back to the NFA, we kind of took that night. That was, that was a fun, that was a fun conversation to talk about there, um, especially since we know that you can do online classes. Uh, so we know that we can we can we can adjust these things pretty much at will. Uh, I mean, you said that you know, like if I want my buddy to borrow a suppressor, I can um, do a temporary, you know, uh, adjust, amendment. adjustment um, amendment. How, um, how do I do the amendment? Do I just write something up and then it just sits in a folder somewhere, or does it need to be filed? So you don't need to file it. Um, what you would do is the uh, the 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 packages that we sell at the uh, com include your your core trust. Then it includes a bunch of other uh, uh, papers. It, it includes some addendums that you can do if you want to wholesale replace all of your trustees, right? Or if you want to temporarily add a trustee or whatever. Um, so what you would do, so let's let's play that scenario. Your buddy wants to borrow your suppressor, you're good with it, cool. You have the suppressor, suppressor has a serial that connects to the form four, form four connects to the trust document, trust document uh contains the list of trustees, then another piece of paper that says uh updated trust as of this date, the list of uh, trustees is as follows. And then you would include them in that list. And then so they would need to have all of that with them. And then when they come back, then you remove the amendment, you know, the, the amendment or addendum, whatever you want to, you want to use. Um, you remove that paper, trust goes back to normal, and there you go. Awesome. Now, I'm going to bring up your website here, um, the Gun Trust NFA. Now, on here... It says, create your NFA gun trust in minutes for just $99. I mean, that's that's a pretty, um, just about anybody could swallow that, especially since they're paying $200 for a tax stamp right. for an NFA right. items. Um, right. And then you, you say here, it's, it's basically three steps. Um, fill out your form, download your trust, and get it notarized. That's correct. Now, once you get it notarized, does the ATF need to approve that? I mean, what happens to that paperwork? So that paperwork uh, essentially stays with you. When you 
when you file your form four or your form one, uh, whichever the case may be, um, you have to give them a copy of the trust. Um, it, it is almost like a, uh, I don't know, it, it's almost like it, it's proof that it exists. Right. Yeah, it's proof that it exists. So they, they, they have a copy of that, uh, of that trust as it sits at the time of the uh, Form 4 application. Now, let me ask you this. Does, is it only for NFA items or could you also put other firearms into that? You can absolutely put other firearms into it, which is, is interesting you bring that up. I don't know if you, if you were thinking this when you said it, but there was a period uh, before the their new ruling got signed uh, and, and put into effect, uh, when it was announced, they said that if you had a braced pistol as a part of the trust prior to the rule going into effect, then you can get the free uh, the do the free form one on it and uh, turn it into an SBR uh, without paying the two hundred dollar tax stamp. Um, so, so these things, I mean, even though we call them NFA trusts, I mean, yes, they do NFA, but it's a trust, it's a trust, yeah. it, it's a trust in general. Um, yes. I mean, these, this, just having a, you know, a gun trust in general can solve, we'll just call, we'll just say problems later, uh, depending on the state that you may be in, because you might be in a fairly unfriendly gun state where Correct. we'll say, Correct. I don't know, California. <laughs> Right. Um, if you're if you transfer your firearms into the tr into a trust and you get hit by a bus. Right. Um, at least there's survivorship of those firearms in the trust with the other trustees. That is correct. Awesome. So you, so yeah. you could solve some you could solve some potential uh, gun confiscation problems. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, maybe, maybe if uh, if uh, uh, l let's say somebody maliciously uh, red flagged you, um, and you you temporarily became a prohibited person and could not possess firearms, if the firearms were in your name, then you know depending upon what the state and what's their process is, you know there's potential that they would seize the firearms. Um, now, if uh, you know again, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to speak to the red this is around the country. They're all yeah, different. This is this is not legal advice. <laughs> correct, correct. But uh, absolutely. But that being the case, if they were only in your name, then whatever process that state has for dealing with uh, uh, people that are red flagged and currently possessing firearms, I, I, I would assume they would confiscate them at least temporarily. But if they were in a trust, certainly you couldn't be like, oh, well, you know, the trusts are not mine, so I'm going to keep them in our bedroom. Like, of course, that's not going to happen. You can't possess them. Right. But but there's a clear path of, hey, they're owned by this organization of five people. I am now prohibited for now. So now it's it's now it's four people instead of five. And so the, the firearms can immediately be hand off to those other four. And there you go. Right. The other trustees. Yeah, yeah. As long as long as they're not physically on the property, you they're with the other trustees. Right. right which, right. in order to do that, in some of these, you know, some of these states, they would have to go to an FFL, fill out a forty four three, wait the waiting period, yeah. and meanwhile, uh, you know, I mean that that could take a while. Whereas the trust, it's like, okay, yeah. for some reason I got red flagged until this is taken care of. Yeah. You know, Joe Bob over there is going to yeah. have all my firearms. Uh, you know, let's, let's, say, let's say, let's say, you know, and, and again, we're, we're talking about different states in here and whatnot, but let's say you're in a state where uh, you get red flagged, all the stuff has to go through a transfer to get to somebody else. And then three days later, uh, you wind up with your day in court and it turns out that the red flagging was simply malicious and untrue. Okay, cool. Now, now we have to go through all that process to transfer back. Firearms back. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and it's not free. It's time consuming. Uh, all of that. But having uh, having uh, having with the trust, it's, it's just cool. Right. So it was with the trust in my home, and now it's with the trust in your home. And, and there you go. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm thinking about something because one of the one of one of the places that I really um, really love it's a it's a nonprofit. It's Hold My Guns. Yes, um, uh, I'm actually, I'm actually going to be. Uh, are you aware of the, the thing with them coming up? Yeah. yeah. Right. Heard, I'll do that. Yeah. Um, what I'm thinking of is 
it, you know, hold my guns is only in certain states, right? They, only, you know, they're building out that network. What I was just thinking of is, in a time of crisis, you could spin up a trust, transfer everything into the trust, and then move everything off property for someone yeah. else to hold for you, especially in some of these restricted states. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, you know, one of my one of my things about uh, about that is I, I love it because we're using a system to avoid a red flag law, right? Yeah. Um, we're using the existing laws to, to, be, red flag. to be clear. To be clear, and you know, I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea here. Um, we're we're avoiding unintended consequences of the red flag, right? right? Exactly. You know, exactly. The red flag is to prevent people from getting hurt. And what we're talking about here would not allow a prohibited person to continue to possess. What right. it would do is it would make it easier for someone that was maliciously targeted. Right. Exactly. So, you know, yeah. dirt, dirt, you know, what we're talking about would still remove the, uh, re remove the, uh, the firearms from somebody that, that what was potentially a threat, right? That's, yeah. let's be real. Yeah. So, you know, it's, as much as we, we hate red flag laws, and I, I say we, I'm including you, because I, I feel like yeah. you're probably in the same boat. I'm not a, um, not a big fan. There are people that shouldn't have firearms, right? We, yeah. we, that's a fact. There, there, there's at least one person walking around that should not be armed. And so, yeah. cool. It is what yeah. it is. Awesome. Because I, I'm just thinking, uh, you know, we always think about the NFA trust, and I'm like, well, if we could transfer firearms, and it opens up, the door to other things. Now, yeah. let me ask you this: What happens if a trustee of the NFA trust um, passes away? Okay, so it's my wife and I, and I pass away, but I was the one who created the trust. Mm -hmm. it, her, could she take over the trust at that time? So there's there's options there, um, and as long as there is a trustee, that trustee can continue the trust or they can honor the uh, beneficiary portion of it and then begin distributing firearms as 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 the, the trust dictates um or they become the sole trustee and, and decide you know what like all right so again it's it's let's say it's uh, you and you and your spouse and your children are the beneficiaries uh your spouse is like you know what i'm not done with them yet so one day um i actually i actually recently helped somebody um they uh they they had acquired their they had acquired their their trust. They set it up uh, uh, before uh, a long time ago, before Gun Trust NFA, before I was in operation. Um, but they found me online and they they contacted me. And her husband had just suddenly passed away, and she was like, "I need help." And I I was I, was, I, I got her on the phone and I was like, "Hey, here here's the thing. I got to ask you a question that's going to be uncomfortable. So before I ask it, I want to I want to tell you, like, I'm going to help you. I will help you. I, we're good." Um, but then I was like, did, did you use one of our kits? And she was like, no. And I was like, no, it's cool. I'll help you. But I need a copy of, of your documentation so that I, I, I can speak to it intelligently. Um, and so I, I got her situated and she was like, yeah, no, I, I, I want to I wanna keep them and keep keep shooting and do my thing. Um, and so they had suppressors and, and things of that nature. And so we, 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 we helped her out and we got her going. Um, but yeah, that, that does happen. Um, you know, people pass away. Yep. Now, is there like a maintenance fee or something that you got to pay annually to either the government or something like that to keep a trust or no nope. it's just basically it's it's done there it is it's you you create an entity and there it is awesome awesome well we've been rolling for wow about amazing how fast time flies we've been rolling about 40 minutes uh how, tell people how they can get a hold of you i mean you know we have a web page and we discovered that you also do the uh online classes make sure we get yeah. that in there yeah so really the, the two ways uh, to, to reach out uh, are, are through guntrustnfa.com and online chp.com and uh depending on what your needs are uh, hit up one of those two sites and uh if you uh you know for folks that are that are near one of our instructors uh we'll generally reach out uh beyond or as, far, as far as the uh online chp stuff is concerned uh, depending upon what someone's needs are, we can generally follow up with some in-person instruction because nothing beats that. Um, yeah. But as far as getting somebody uh, the the documentation they need to to quickly get uh, you know get their permit and, and get things moving, um, I, I like to tell people you know options. Um, 
you know, have the option to be able to carry. Uh, the, the scenario I give for people who I know of people who've gotten that their concealed carry, um, but their wife isn't interested, right? Or their husband isn't interested or whatnot. I'm like, hey, imagine this. Uh, the one of you that has the permit you're carrying, you go to pick the kids up at the school, you you disarm, you you put your uh, your firearm in the, the console of your car, you forget about it, you go home, and then your spouse goes to the grocery store and gets pulled over, and now they're a felon. But if yeah. if they had preemptively gotten the permit and had the permit, then it's no big deal. You know, cops just like, why didn't you tell me that was there? I didn't know it was there. Okay, but here's my permit, and I'm good. Whereas if you don't have that permit, then suddenly you're a felon, and yeah. people don't people don't realize what a felony does. Um, a felony will change the rest of your life. Even if you don't spend a day in jail, having a felony on your record will change your life. Well, I mean, it, it'll affect everything all the way down to getting a job. What if you, Absolutely. you know, I mean, basically if you have a job and then you have a felony while you're working for that company, as long as you don't get fired, that's basically your job for life. Um, you know, because somebody else may not want a felon working for them. Um, Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I used to I used to work in banking. Um, you, you're not going to get a job in banking. No, no one's going to touch a felon at all. I mean, it's just not going to happen. There are cer certain industries they they can't touch. They can't touch you. You you just might be a grocery store bagger. Not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but if you're a a professional, pretty high up in your career. Yep. That is detrimental to your to oh, yeah. your income. Oh yeah, all, all because somebody forgot they forgot a, a firearm. Yeah, yeah. Simple, yeah. Or, or 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 you pulled out of the parking lot the wrong exit and wound up on one way into DC, and then, and then <laughs> yeah, your, your life has changed. It's yeah. it's wild, it's wild. Uh, it's it's funny thinking about that. I remember um, this is back in the nineties. I, I, you know, I used to shoot GSSF. Uh, I used to be a Glock shooter, and um, uh, that's before my I, uh, IDPA and IPSC and all all those days. But I remember, you know, we were living we were living in Delaware. We were going to shoot um, a match in uh, Waldorf, Maryland. Okay. okay. And uh, you know, I lived I had lived outside of DC for a year, and I remember <laughs> we're driving along, and I took a wrong turn. And then uh, <laughs> I, I said to my wife, went, oh, shit. She's like, what? Because she this was her for uh, this was her first competition ever. That she was going to do. So we got two Glocks in, in, you know, locked up in the trunk and we passed science. Welcome to D.C. I'm like, <laughs> we got to get out of here fast. Yes. She's like, what? Yes. I go, we we're now con committing a felony. Now, we didn't mean to. Yeah. So yeah. long term, we need to get the hell out of here fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I know about the whole make a wrong turn, end up in DC yeah. with a fire. Yeah, you're, and, and and you're like, I'm in I'm in the one place on the planet where I really need a gun, and the one place on the planet where I can't have a gun. Can't have one gun. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, everybody definitely go check out um, the the gun trust NFA and um, the the concealed carry class. I will have the links down below, so don't worry about writing this stuff down. If you're listening to this on the audio side, um, don't don't pull out a pen and start to write this stuff down as you're driving. Just come back, look at the description, and click the link, and then you'll get over there and um, get set up. Because I, I, honestly, I'm now thinking about this stuff. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking about this stuff. Going, you know, 100 bucks for an NFA. Uh, this. This is probably going to be a conversation at dinner tonight with my wife because, yeah. you know, we we talk about secession planning. It's, you know, uh, we're, we have wills and stuff like that, but it might be a really good idea to do this stuff to to put all the firearms into an organization that can be controlled and and um, they don't have to worry about it. You know, Absolutely. if something happens to me, it's, it's my guns, her guns, whatever guns they are, they're just now just into this trust. and. We just yep. don't have to worry about it. Yep. So, Absolutely. well, one thing I like to do when we're wrapping up, just to have a little bit of fun, cool. it's a speed round. So, it's going to be four this or that questions, and then one thinking question. And for the first question, three fifty-seven Magnum or forty-four Magnum? Uh, forty-four. Forty-four. Bigger's better. 
Why not? <laughs> Plus, it's dirty Harry, right? That's right. <laughs> Striker fired or hammer fired? Uh, God, I would say striker fired. Um, and I mean, I'd say striker fired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a tough one because, like, for me, I, I, I've i been shooting for uh, a little over 40 years. Right. And, you know, we started off in 22s. They were striker fired, right? Um, but the first 9 millimeter I shot was a, was a um, Smith & Wesson Model 59, hammer, you know, hammer mm-hmm. fired. So I, le- I learned hammer fired plus revolvers and stuff like that. And then um, I, when I turned 21, I went out and bought a Glock 17. That's actually how I started competing. Um, that was my yeah. gateway into competition, but I had no idea I was going to do that. Um, so like like you, I've been banging away on keyboards for so many years. Carpal tunnel is kind of a thing in our industries. Um, and it's starting. So I was like, well, I, as much as I love competing with my Glock, Glocks are not the most ergonomic pistol in the world, right? So I switched over to a SIG to high point. What's that? I so think you switched to a high point. What? I'm kidding. No, 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 I did not. Uh, I was thinking more like a, a Geminis or Yemenis or whatever they call it. Yeah, I saw one the other day, actually. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, and that was that was the hardest thing going from striker fired back to hammer fired. Because the 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 Sig P320 that wasn't out yet, uh, then I switched to P320. I'm like, oh, thank God, I'm back out. I'm out of hammer fired. But I think if you if is if I line my guns up there, as much as I like my 229 and my 220 and and all my other hammer fired guns, I think I'm gonna pick a striker fired up first. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I I feel like. I, I feel like it's just the evolution, you know, you know, the, everything, the, the more modern, you know, the striker fires. Well, what's funny is, um, so my, I love a 1911. I love a 1911. I love my 1911s. Yes, I do love my 1911s. Uh, my wife collects Berettas. Uh, it was really yeah. nice back when I had my FFL. Um, she had yeah. access to my gun broker account. Um, sure. That got interesting sometimes. Um, so she has some old, she has a Beretta, uh, 1915. Okay. So it's the first pistol the Beretta ever produced. Uh, serial number goes back to 19, uh, 1916. And, uh, it's, well, it's, um, you know, she has all these guns going through there and it's amazing how many striker fired pistols existed way back when that we never even think about. Um, yeah, I mean. There, uh, she has some guns that are over 100 years old that are striker fired. And you just like, because we think about, you know, striker fired, hey, Glock. And yeah. Yeah. It, it's so funny how it kind of went out and then it came back in and it came back in hard. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what, what's old is new again, right? Yeah, exactly. Or uh, what they say is uh, as much as much as things change, they stay the same. Same, 100%. 100%. Uh, let's see here. I, I lost. You know, we got talking about that. I lost track. I think that was number two. Um, uh, I lost you. So, AR or AK? Get your audio back. Uh, I lost your audio. I don't know if you can hear you me. There. I can hear you. I lo- okay. Yeah, I, I lost your audio for a minute. There you go. So. AR or AK? Hundred uh, percent AR. Hundred percent AR. Uh, my 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 oldest and I fight about this. He, he is a, he is an AK fanatic. Uh, it is his jam. Um, and, and every every meme that you can find on the internet about AR versus the AK guys, uh, you will we we have sent back and forth disparaging the other at every opportunity. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm an AR guy. An AR guy? There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, that's right. I, I, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it being an AR fan. Um, the, uh, the one thing that I've learned about being an AR fan 
is um, the evolution for me into the 308 ARs. Okay, um, okay. I love my I love my two two threes, but there's something about taking out a 308 AR. I just I don't know. It's just sizable. Uh, yeah. What I what I have actually is I have uh, I'm I'm an 0702 FFL, so I I, okay. I built some exotic stuff. Um, I actually have uh, built for my my son a left handed uh, AR chambered in 762 by 39. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Um, so he, he's left-handed, so it, it shoots the uh, brass out uh, to the left side as opposed to uh, coming back on him. Um, and uh, it's chambered in 762.39 because that's his jam and uh, left-handed controls. So. It's funny because back when I was in FFL, um, I used to be a uh, Stag Arms dealer. Okay. Okay. And that's 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 where I get my stuff. I, uh, yeah, I was about to say when you talk left-handed AR, it's that's like, it's going to be, be stag. Because uh, the one thing that I remember about stag arm with the first time I saw a left-handed AR, I'm like, why does the ejection port flip up? Right? I'm like, that is the dumbest thing in the world. Why does it flip down? And then you go because then it's in the way of the bolt release. <laughs> like, oh yeah, uh, you know, but it's it's so different seeing a left-handed AR. Because uh, you think, you know, you think, okay, we're just going to take all this stuff and then put it over there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't quite work that work out like no. that. There's a little bit, no, a little more engineering to that. Yep, yep, yep. Where did, yep. where did you find a left-handed bolt for a seven six two? Uh, it, it took effort. It took effort. I mean, that's just not something you just go, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna no. go out and you know, go to Brownells and just pick one of those things up. Right. Wow. Because yep. yep. I mean, the upper is going to be the same as the two two three. You just yeah, you, know, you put a three hundred eight barrel, or not three hundred eight, uh, a seven six two barrel. Yep. But that bolt has got to be something to be uh, prized. Yeah. Awesome. So in shotguns, <laughs> semi-auto or double barrel. Mm. I, I think uh, uh, to choose between the two, I think there's something nostalgic about the uh, the, the the double barrel. Yeah, yeah, there there is. Um, it's one of those things. Uh, you see, for me, it, it it depends on what I'm going to shoot. Okay. Uh, so so I'm going to cop out here. Like if I'm going to shoot three gun, it's not going to be a double barrel. It's going to be my right. belly M two. Uh, but there's just something about taking a double barrel out um, and just, you know, do some sporting clays. It's, it's just it's just awesome. Right. I mean, it's, it yeah. just it's, right. Yep. Yeah. Crack so, up, you drop a couple shells in there and go about your business. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then you got your two chokes. You know, so yep. that way I can yep. I have my short, my long range. Yeah. Yep. You know, I, I get it, man. There's there's and there are some beautiful double barrel shotguns out there. Absolutely. All right. So for your final question, this is your thinking question. You have a warehouse okay. with every NFA item that has ever existed. And you're allowed to have one and only one for the rest of your life. What do you grab? Now you can cheat. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a cop out here. You can cheat mm -hmm. because if you pick a rifle, you can also pick a suppressor too. I tell you, of of, of what I what I actually have, uh, and what I what I really like uh, being a uh, being a, an 0702, I, I've I've manufactured. Um, some M16 clones, and I uh, I love my uh, OSS Helix on the end of that. Um, that is an awesome combination. I, I've definitely uh, enjoyed that. Um, as far as so as far as far as far as the, uh, in, in, if I could have anything, um, I, I think I'd go for a saw, man. I think I'd go for something belt fed. Oh, uh, it's there always, you go. It's, it's always nice yeah. to have something belt fed in your life, right? Yeah, uh, Saul is. When I was at Shot Show this year, uh, when I was at Range Day, 
I okay. missed my opportunity to go out and play with the saw. Um, uh, I, I, I was there and I wimped out so quick. It was so cold. Uh, that was a that was a miserable day at the range. And, oh and then that rainstorm rolled through. Yes. Yes. It was so bad. I, I, I just I couldn't do it. Um, the past few range days I've been at have been great. Uh, you know, I, I thought a couple of them were hair chilly, but I was mistaken uh, until this year. Th- this year was cold. Year. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's one of those things of um, when I got up to the you know the up the far end of the upper side where that those saws were. Yeah, I was just like, damn, I'm just tired. <laughs> you know, yeah. the wind's been blowing all damn day. Um, it, you know, it's just beat me up. The rainstorm rolled through chased everybody into the tents for a little while. Yeah. Um, and then it was just, it was just so, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I absolutely love getting out there and squeezing some triggers. I mean, anytime you can squeeze, anytime you can squeeze off some rounds and you're not paying for it. I'm seven it, up. It, 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 right. Yep. Right. Yeah, I, uh, I, I was super happy to get on the bus headed out there and I was super happy to get on the bus headed back. <laughs> See, and I drove. So it's like, okay. Uh, okay. I, I, I could I could just kind of chill out on the bus on the way home. I had to stay awake to get to get back to the condo where where the rest of us were staying. Yeah, um, yeah, that's funny. Um, but yeah, that was a that was not a fun day. At the, I mean, it was a fun day. It was just it was the the weather was challenging that day. Hundred um, uh, percent. I know. Um, so EAA, they were. Um, yeah, I, I know. I know one. Of the, well, I know a couple of the guys over there. And then after that rainstorm rolled through, I got to the EAA booth, and then I see uh, his name's Chase. He's like huddled into his booth trying to get out of the rain because he can't leave the booth because he's nope. got guns there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And he's just trying to stay out of the rain. And I'm just like, oh, this sucks, dude. He's like, yeah. Yes. So. Yeah, that was awesome. Not what fun about that? No. Well, man, thank you so much for taking time out to talk to us today about uh, NFA Trust. Everybody, like I said before, all the links are down below. Make sure you go down there and click them out and click them and check them out. Because, I mean, seriously, I'm looking at the web page on my other monitor here. Ninety nine bucks. I mean, seriously, what t- what kind of insurance can you get for ninety nine bucks? Um, definitely go check this thing out because I know I will be. Now, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you. During that entire interview, I wasn't rethinking a lot of ways of how I acquire guns. I'm really seriously considering a trust and putting all my firearms in a trust and then putting anything future into that trust as well because it gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, these trusts can help you out in some of these, well, unfriendly states. If you live in an unfriendly state, this might be an awesome solution for you. I mean, you heard us talk about it. Definitely think about it. Now, I promised you that I could save you some money if you go over to guntrustnfa.com and use the checkout code JASON, it's J-A-S-O-N, to save you 10%. That's right, 10%. Now, we're talking about a service, it's 100 bucks. Well, put 10 bucks back in your pocket. I mean, and you have the flexibility of this trust, of a gun trust, that you can put guns in and then you can put people into the trust and pull them out of the trust and then, you know, even decide what happens to the guns after the trust goes away. I mean, that's awesome. That's why I'm thinking about doing this myself. So go check out Gun Trust NFA. Now, for the product of the podcast, it is the Saver Equipment Lusax. Now, I just got these in. I mean, like, literally got these in this week, and I fell in love with them. And they are really awesome. They're exactly what I come to expect from Saver. And what they are is they're ammo bags, right? Oh, God, this one's full of 9mm. And I'm going to see if I can open this up without falling out if... They all fall out while well, you get a good laugh, but no, I did it. You can see these are all nine millimeters and um, man, they can hold a lot and uh, they're going to take some abuse. I know they're going to take some abuse because I was just expecting this thing to burst at the seams and 
I've come to know better than think about that from Saber equipment. Go check out these loose sacks. I have a link down in the description. They're awesome and they're not that expensive. I think it was like 25 bucks for four of them. And you get eight labels too. You get the right old labels, you can stick on the side. Go check them out. So if you're watching this on YouTube, right there, I got a link for you. It's the top five upgrades for an AR for a beginner. Definitely click on that and check it out. Thanks for listening. Hope you're staying safe out there. Look forward to talking to you again soon.